Hi guys, welcome back to Garage Tech. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the coolant temperature sensor and how the actual circuit and the sensor works. So thank you for joining. If you've already watched episode one, that's great. If not, you might want to go back and just check to see how and what the coolant temperature sensor is all about. And episode three, I'll be going through some more diagnosis. So having a look at some of these fault codes that I've got up here and how to go through diagnosing and testing and checking the circuit. So what we're going to look at today then is uh, how this sensor actually works and what the ECU is doing uh, with the information. So if you remember from episode one, I mentioned that the end brass capsule on the end uh, here uh, inside, oh, inside is a uh, thermistor and um, it's basically this thermistor and the way the circuit works it's a voltage divider circuit so up here i've got one resistor in here i've got a resistor so in your actual temperature sensor in here is a variable resistor it's called a thermistor and this type of uh, variable resistor is known as a ntc type of resistor so what that means is it's negative temperature coefficient so as the temperature starts to go up in the engine the resistance value that is measured in here starts to go down. So with the voltage divider circuit, and I'll explain more on that later, effectively the voltage that the reading that the ECU then makes actually starts to go down as well. So as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down, the voltage reading that the engine ECU is reading goes down as well. Now there is another type of sensor which is called a PTC, so that's positive temperature coefficient. So slightly um, different, works in the opposite way. So as the temperature goes up, the actual resistance value also goes up uh, in that example. These NTC sensors are used uh, practically everywhere on the car where it needs to measure some temperature. These temperature sensors are really good at measuring uh, temperatures from uh, minus 40 up to 140, up to 200 degrees C. Uh, after that, you tend to use a PTC sensor. So you'll typically find a PTC type of sensor on things like your exhaust, your turbos and things like that, where the temperatures are a lot, lot higher. Now, again, thinking the way, the way that this circuit works and we're talking about the engine coolant temperature sensor, this is going to be exactly the same for like your oil temperature sensor or your intake air temperature sensor, your ambient air temperature sensor. Uh, there will be multiple engine temperature sensors around the engine, so you might have a cylinder head and uh, temperature sensor. They're all work in exactly the same way, so you can take this knowledge and learning and uh, replicate that for the other sensors uh, on the engine. So, key thing to remember, it's an NTC, negative temperature coefficient. As the temperature goes up, the resistance value in this variable thermistor resistor inside here uh, starts to come down. So... If we take a closer look then, just going to rub this bit out. If we take a closer look at the actual circuit itself, and as I mentioned, you've effectively got two resistors in the circuit, one in the engine ECU, one in the actual sensor itself. And then what the ECU is doing, or the measurement it takes, is at that midpoint. So that's why we call it a voltage divider circuit. Effectively, the engine ECU has got a built-in voltmeter or multimeter and it's taken a voltage reading at that middle point in the circuit. So imagine it's wired in series, so it's one after each other, and it's taking the voltage at the midpoint. As this uh, resistance value goes up and down, the voltage that's being measured here is going to change. It's going to go on up, up and down, as I mentioned. As the temperature goes up, resistance value goes down, the voltage goes down. So as the engine gets hotter, the voltage that's being measured here will start to come down. So it takes that voltage reading, and it then cross reference that with a map. I'll put a couple up on the screen so you can see. Um, so effectively, when you've got a set uh, voltage reading, that basically indicates it cross references to a temperature. So at 3.5 uh, volts, for example, we may say that actually your engine is at then uh, 15 degrees C. Okay, so that's just a rough figure. Um, some of the uh, different engine ECUs and manufacturers may be slightly different, but give you a rough indication. The ECU cross reference that with its map. It then sends that information over to the dash pod via data communication, so via CAN bus. 
And then the dash pod then receives that information, interprets that back into a reading, which it then displays on either your analog or digital display, which effectively is what you see as the driver on your dash display to tell you what your engine temperature is. So, and again, as the uh, voltage readings start to come down, it just sends a different message to the dash periodically to say, the temperature's now X, the temperature's now X, the temperature's now X, and then obviously it displays it on the information. Now, typically, if you've got a problem with your circuit, whether that's uh, an incorrect uh, sensor reading, the correct reading, now don't forget, that information will then be used by the engine ECU. It'll be sent to your dashboard. But the most important thing is your engine ECU is not just taking that information and using it for your dashboard. The engine ECU is taking that information and it's using it to uh, control a lot of the fueling and ignition uh, timing, etc., within the engine. So it's going to be obviously as the engine's cold, it uses more fuel, particularly when you're first starting it from cold, because it wants to get the engine up to operating temperature as quick as possible. It's then going to be measuring that to understand whether it needs to turn on the EGR once the engine starts to get up to temperature, or then turn off EGR once the engine gets really, really hot. It may want to turn the EGR back on again to try and help control the emissions and again some of the ignition timing. So. Your engine temperature uh, is really quite important. Now, what the actual engine ECU will do, it will cross-reference the engine ECU, um, sorry, what, it will, what the engine ECU will do is cross-reference the engine coolant temperature sensor with other things like your um, intake air temperature sensor. Uh, you might have, obviously, oil temperature sensor. It's probably got um, another uh, engine temperature somewhere else that might just be um, inside a block somewhere or inside the cylinder head where it might not actually be in contact with the actual coolant itself but it's still uh, um, a temperature sensor it will cross reference those and if it sees that oh hold on a minute the coolant temperature sensor seems to be a lot hotter or colder than the others then that's when you may get a fault code like malfunction or a fault fault code like uh, intermittent because actually it's not reading the same or similar values that it's expected to see um, it watches stored in its maps so that's where you might get some of those fault codes but another way to quickly check this and I'll go through some more diagnosis stuff on episode three but just to give you a bit of a teaser um, if you've got some form of um, diagnostic machine or, or code reader you can probably start to read some of the data blocks and one of the good things that you could do if you think you've got an issue with it is actually when the engine is cold check the um, data block of the engine coolant temperature sensor, cross-reference that with the intake air temperature sensor, because you've probably most likely definitely got an intake air temperature sensor. If you've got then an oil temperature sensor, for example, or you may have another uh, engine temperature sensor of some kind, whether that's a cylinder head, for example, um, they technically, they should all be reading the same because the engine's cold. So that's one way to kind of cross-reference and check actually is the reading that you get from your coolant temperature sensor does it look or seem like it's sensible with the other temperature sensors that you've got okay so back to this voltage divider circuit and i'll do a little bit of a diagram to help explain what we mean by this voltage divider circuit so effectively you've got your two uh, resistors wired in series so that's one after the other and we need to think about this in when we come to our diagnosis side of things because if it's wired in series if you get a break in the wire what's going to happen to the circuit it's not going to work is it so none of these resistors technically would work so that's why the circuit can be fairly fragile in that respect because you're you're wired in series um but we're going to start here with five volts. Most of our sensors on the car will work on five volts. I'll explain why on episode three. Um, and effectively, then what you've got, obviously, this then is the, your engine ECU. Okay, this part here, similar to what we've got up there. And effectively, what you've got then at the midpoint here, the engine ECU is taking a voltage reading. So for this example, this is going to be my multimeter. And we're just taking it at that midpoint. So... <clears throat> When our uh, engine is cold, for example, what we're probably going to end up with is obviously a high resistance value on our uh, variable resistor, our temperature sensor. So our temperature sensor here is going to have a high 
resistance values we saw here. So we've got a low temperature, resistance value is high. So in this example, we're going to say we're at uh, three kilo ohms. Okay. Our resistor value that's in our ETU is fixed. That doesn't change. So I'm just going to say that's 1.5 kilo ohms. Okay. So our voltage reading then, we've got five volts starting here. This is going to consume some voltage. This is going to consume some voltage. As we know from our electrical testing in any circuit, at the end of the circuit, at the earth, you should have zero volts. Yeah, that's what we should be reading. So all the voltage should be consumed. If we now think about our voltages then. So um, we've got a high resistance value here and a low resistance value there. So whatever is the highest resistance value, that is going to be the resistor that uses the most amount um, of voltage. So in this example, then we've got three kilo ohms here, 1.5 there. This one is going to use less voltage than this one. So let's say, for example, this uh, resistor may use 3.5 volts. That means that this resistor here is only going to be using 1.5 of the volts. Yeah, because we've got our five volts, so that's going to use 1.5 volt, that's going to use 3.5 of the volts. So our volt is reading in the middle, our divider circuit part there is going to then read 3.5 volts. So then that means then our engine ECU in that midpoint in there, before as it goes to that point, because we, again that's only using 1.5 of the volt, so effectively out here now you've got 3.5 volts coming out. So if you were to get your own multimeter, one wire to earth, and then you went and checked at that point there. So perhaps that's pin number one on your uh, temperature sensor. You'll read 3.5 volts. It's exactly the same as what the engine ECU is reading in that midpoint. It takes that voltage reading, cross-reference it with the map, as I said, and then it will put the information on the dash and the engine ECU will still use that information for its own sources to figure out what it wants to do with ignition timing and fueling and other various things. Now, as the temperature starts to increase, remember what's going to happen to our resistance value. Temperature goes up, resistance value comes down. So now let's say, for example, we're at... Um, 1.5 kilo ohms. We're exactly the same kilo ohm reading as what we've got in our engine ECU. Okay. So now that five volts that we started with there is going to be equally shared between the two. Because actually now at this point they're both the same. So this resistor is going to use 2.5 volts. This resistor is going to use 2.5 volts. Okay. So our voltage reading that we use here, that's going to be 2.5 volts because that's going to use two and a half. Two and a half volts is going to be left to go into that one. So in our own multimeter, we should read 2.5. So inside the engine ECU, that's going to read two and a half volts. We've tested it with your own multimeter, two and a half volts. We know that actually those two resistors then technically are going to be at the same resistance value. So that's one way you could do a test if you wanted to know what the resistor value was inside the engine ECU. You just wait till the voltage gets to two and a half volts and you then just test the resistance value. That's going to tell you. But if you're two and a half volts, then we might say that then your engine temperature is, I don't know, it's probably going to be around 35 uh, to 40 degrees C. Okay because we're at that midpoint, the engine's starting to get hot. Now, if we want to go, right, let's go up to 85, up to our operating temperature. Our resistance value is going to do what now? It's going to be even lower, isn't it? Our resistance value is going to be even lower now. So we might say that now we're at, I don't know, 0 0.3 kilo ohms. So if we've really gone right down, so if we're at, 0.3 of a kilo ohm obviously our resistance value that one still stays the same but now what we need to think about is well which one is the highest resistance value now 
the resistor with the highest value now is this one, the one inside the engine ECU. So that now means that this um, resistor is going to use more of the voltage than this one. So this example, then we can say this resistor now is going to use four volts. That means you're going to have one volt left over for that one. So in our midpoint again here, the ECU, that's going to measure one volt. And then if we were to use our own multimeter and go and measure at that pin number one, our coolant temperature sensor, that will read one volt. OK, again, if you've got some diagnostic equipment, you can cross reference this because now a lot of the, the good the good ones will tell you what the voltage reading is actually on the engine temperature sensor. So you can cross reference that, check it with your um, diagnostic uh, equipment, check the voltage reading that the ECU is reading, and you can physically check with your own multimeter as well to cross reference to check to see if it's the same. So hopefully that now kind of gives you a little bit more of an understanding of how the system works. Now, if you can really understand how the system works, it will make it really easy to go through and diagnose and check and test uh, the system if you've got any errors. Now, I would recommend if you can um, try and get yourself a, a wiring diagram uh, similar to that. That will give you a bit more information. So it's got the signal wire, it's got the ground wire on there so you can kind of see um, exactly uh, where they are. That's gonna really help uh, help you understand the, the, the diagram and the circuit and what pins to go and check. Okay, so hopefully guys, that has given you some insight into how the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor works. Uh, with that information, then you might be able to take that away and actually do some diagnosis of some testing yourselves. If you've got any issues with your car and you want a little bit of advice, please do drop me some comments. I'll do what I can to try and help you out and uh, point you in the right direction. But failing that, let's go check episode three and we're going to talk about some of the diagnosis and the testing. Okay, guys, take care.